Hello, welcome back to 555, five games in five minutes on day five. We pick five games a month that you should keep your eyes on in the current month. In addition, we choose five from the previous month that deserve recognition. What you are seeing right now is Immortal Redneck, a roguelike FPS that released in mid-May on the Nintendo Switch. An excellent take on the genre that takes the upgrade elements of the Amazing Rogue Legacy and places them in the middle of the pyramids. This unfortunately also released last year. So I opted to leave it out of the look back. However, even if it were completely new, it might have its work cut out for it with all the great games that came out. So in no particular order, we begin with May. Released at the end of the month, Just Shapes and Beats is a game that's been described as rhythmic bullet hell. Using the five Ds you learned in gym class, you must dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge your way through the various levels, similar to how you had to dodge attacks in Undertale, only more rhythmically. And while it does have one when you turn it on, I'll put it right here. Seizure warning. But it is very enjoyable, so I still recommend it. Available on the Switch and Steam. Moonlighter is an RPG that mixes together store management and dungeon crawling, a bit like the also great Reseteer, an item shop's tale. Only the main character will be fighting this time around. By night, you explore the local gates that lead to different worlds, collecting and looting what you can find. By day, you sell your findings to passers-by in order to bring prosperity to your town of Rinoka. Released on most major platforms, with a Switch port coming later this year. Well, here's something for those that like their pinball a little more cartoony and their spinball a little less blast. Oh god, I hope someone got that joke. Yoku's Island Express is a pinball adventure game where you help Yoku traverse the island of Mokumana, delivering parcels and helping the island deity. An excellent twist on the genres, Yoku delivers an experience that hasn't been seen in years. You owe it to yourself to bounce on over to the console store of your choice to check it out. Hey, remember that awesome RPG Obsidian Entertainment crowdfunded through Kickstarter a few years back? Well, it's got a sequel, crowdfunded through the game-focused service Fig. Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire picks up five years after the original game, with Aethas reawaking after he was believed to be dead. You, as a watcher, must hunt down Aethas and find out what he's planning before it's too late. The game released on PC platforms, but is expected on home consoles later this year. Alright, here, enjoy this Castlevania tribute game while I list off a bunch of games that couldn't make the cut. Wizards of Legend, Smoke and Sacrifice, Dragon Cliff, Fantasy Versus, Ancestors Legacy, Slipstream, Unworthy, Overload, Quarantine Circular. Again, this ended up being a very solid month for indie titles. There were just too many to choose from. Oh yeah, this is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, a side project of Koji Igarashi and Inti Creates. This is a little taste of what's to come in the Kickstarted Metroidvania game, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. And if this game is any indication, Ritual of the Night should be an awesome take on the genre. Also, if this is any indication, if you're a developer or IP holder that wants to revive an old series, consider Inti Creates. Between this, Blaster Master Zero, and Mighty Gunvolt, as well as its sequel, they are now 3 for 3 developing retro games. With that done, we move into June. I'm sure I'm going to get some flack for this with half the roster locked behind paywalls, but June is pretty hard to fill out a preview for right now. Most of the focus this month is on E3, which hopefully means the rest of the year we'll have plenty to work with. However, I did enjoy what I played in the online demo, even if I was horribly outmatched. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle is available right now in North America, and later this month in Europe, for the Switch, PS4, and PC. Another game that recently ended its online demo, Mario Tennis Aces, is a new take on the old Mario Tennis sub-series of games. The game features new elements such as zone speed, allowing you to slow down the game to catch the ball, zone shot, where you can aim for a specific part of the court, and trick shots, a defensive shot that can move you across the court to help keep the rally going, assuming you time it right. And if you don't care for that, the normal elements play well enough to enjoy with simple rules. Mario Tennis Aces will be available on the Switch on June 22nd.
Hey, more demo footage. This is Sushi Striker, The Way of Sushido, a puzzle fighter game where you, as Musashi, must fight your opponents by eating as much matching sushi as you can. When you eat the sushi, the plates will stack up, giving you a chance to attack. You'll also have the chance to activate specials that can help with healing and turning every plate a specific color for a short time, just to name a few. I've had a lot of fun with the demo and can't wait for it to fully release on June 8th for Nintendo Switch and 3DS. A trio of ports are coming to Switch this month, including a major third-party game from last year. First is the Banner Saga 2 on June 7th, the tactical RPG from Versus Evil that will lead us into the third and final game in this trilogy next month. The second is East 8 on June 26, the latest installment in the long-running series, marking the first new East game to land on a Nintendo platform for the first time since East 4 Mask of the Sun, and the first East game of any type since East 1 and 2 DS. Finally, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus makes its long-awaited debut on the Switch on June 29th, the first game in the series on any Nintendo system since the rather poor GBA port of Wolfenstein 3D. While those are all nice to have, there are still two more ports coming. We end June's preview with a pair of remasters that are coming to everything. First is Luminous, a puzzle game that's based around sound and light patterns, originally releasing on PSP with a later port to PC. This remaster will be coming to all home consoles and PC on June 26th. And finally, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, the remaster of the first three Crash Bandicoot games. Originally released on PS4 last year, all home consoles, plus PC, will receive this remaster. In addition, the game is actually releasing two weeks earlier than expected, coming June 29th. And that's 5 for May and June. If you like their list and want to see more when they come out, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell when you subscribe so you can receive notifications of new videos. If you want to add to it, list the games in the comment section below. And if you have suggestions for games in July, feel free to add those too. I'm Jeff from Some Nerdy Arguments, and I'll see you next month with another set of games.